The benefits that the islands provide, I think, is just that they are so unique. Um, even, even, even San Clemente Island, which is, which is, you know, owned and operated by the Navy, um, there, it's a very active training area. But you wouldn't really know it unless you were there watching the training event. Most, most of the island is completely open, um, and so I think the value that it has is just seeing a large slice of California without uh, a strip mall or a, you know, a, a, a suburban landscape, uh, I think is just very unique because there aren't many places like that in Southern California. I don't think it's just the exoticness of the floor here and that there are a few things that don't occur on the mainland. I think it's that you can really see those patterns where you each island has a slightly different version of what's out there. The islands are just a, an amazing, amazing experience. Uh, the, uh, the beauty, the isolation, uh, even though the Central Valley is kind of closed in, when you walk out at night and look up at the sky, uh, there's no fog that night, you can, well, you, you get rid of all the, you know, the, the light at night uh, kinds of effects you have in a city and you can really see the sky and the Milky Way and uh, it's just, uh, just an enchanting, enchanting place. Looking back over the last couple, you know, 30 years, I think the removal of the feral sheep probably started the whole thing. I think it was a very important one because it was, they were having a dramatic impact. We removed almost 35,000 sheep. A lot of people said we couldn't do it. It gave us the confidence once we were able to do it to know that we could do even bigger and better things. The sheep was, you know, um, the worst overgrazing in Western North America. There was just nothing that was going to be surviving out here in the long term in any good and viable fashion if the, something wasn't done to remove them. So just by getting rid of them and letting the, the system start to recover on their own, I think has sort of set the trajectory for all the other work that's come since then. Those animal eradication projects have been hugely successful and all the folks I've been out on to the island with who are part of that or who worked here in the days when the pigs or the sheep were here are stunned every time they come out with how the vegetation has increased and changed. There's a lot of hope that that's going to happen to Guadalupe Island and in Guadalupe Island it already has started with some shrubs that were not known to exist anywhere in the world have popped up out of the middle of nowhere because they must have hung on in the cliffs and there's a Ceanothus, Ceanothus arboreus also occurs here has shown up on Guadalupe Island in the areas that were completely barren because those seeds have been there for 200 years and they were able to re-sprout to germinate and without goats there, they were able to survive. When the goats were here, they weren't. El resultado de, de tanto trabajo que realizamos en las islas de México, particularmente que nosotros realizamos en Guadalupe, lo vemos reflejado cuando vemos la expansión o el crecimiento del bosque de ciprés, del bosque de pino. Eh, eso es, es fantástico el ver cómo las, el, el trabajo de uno, las acciones de día a día, tienen una respuesta medianamente inmediata. Y podemos observar cómo tenemos plántulas, cómo va creciendo el bosque en, en distribución, en densidad, eh, en biomasa. Y es fantástico, es, una, es un logro y es una alegría eh, que la vamos a llevar todo el tiempo hasta, hasta el final.